I wake up in the morning time, the first thing I do before I even brush my teeth, I gotta look over whatever service I need, do what I'm gonna order for breakfast. James B is another chronic overeater. The first thing he does every morning before he even brushes his teeth is order breakfast. Good morning, how you doing? I'm calling to put in an order for breakfast this morning, please. The amount of stuff that you could get is just crazy, so I just, I get excited. He orders two slices of steak and premium pancakes, something called a game day family feast, an order of French toast, two apple juices, and two extra slices of ham. I'm always ready to eat. I just feel like the food has to be eaten. Food could be here and I tell myself, stop, just put it down. He goes on to tell the folks at home that he basically cannot resist food when it's in front of him. My brother would do some grocery shopping for me. He used video call to show me where he's at in the store so I could guide him to get me what I need. He sent his brother to the supermarket to do grocery shopping for him. They video call as he walks around the store and James orders a bunch of junk food. All right, let me get two ice cream balls. Sure, sure, too. Thanks, bro. I need that. His brother claps back and asks if he really needs two boxes of ice cream, but James insists he does. Let me get the mandarin. Let me get that cheese right there. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, cops that. Let me get that right there. The scoops. I think you got no snacks. I think you good. That's it for snacks, bro? That's it? That's it. Fruit punch, orange soda, chips, nacho cheese, pizza, and much more get added to the cart until his brother cuts him off. Let me take a look. Let me take a look. Let's see. Let's see. I'm loving the food. These ribs? Oh, girl. Is that the best thing for you? Just a few minutes later, James is eating again. Ribs, chicken wings, macaroni and cheese, and mashed potatoes are all on this plate, killing James slowly. I can't stop eating because food is all I know. Food is the only thing that makes my day better. So I can never wait for when Michael brings me something. And that first bite is such a great feeling because this food is like a drug to me. And I just have to have it all the time. Let's switch gears to Carlton and Chantel, two obese siblings who shared a joint episode. But when things got really bad and my dad was doing what he did, Chantel would always help me get through it all. It made it better, usually by getting something we like to eat and bringing it to me. Carlton's first meal of the day is six cheeseburgers from McDonald's with what appears to be apple pies and two large fries. I just know this man cried his eyes out the day they got rid of the supersize. Between him and his sister, they've been single-handedly paying Ronald McDonald's rent for years, I bet. Thank you. Thank you. My drinks? I feel like me and Carlson are just not living. And I think to myself that it's my fault. I'm the reason both of our lives are destroyed. And if I lose him because of this, I don't think I'd ever recover. For their next meal, they casually eat four giant pizzas, cheesy bread, a plate of pasta, and about a dozen cinnamon rolls. Hey guys, I'm gonna come in here do this. All right. All right. This one is definitely yours because we got two boxes in here. Their episode wouldn't be complete though without an epic trip to the drive-thru, now would it be? I know we should be eating healthier right now, but being on the road makes that really hard. Fast food is the only option we have in most places. Me and Chantel are doing what we are calling a farewell tour of places we like to get food at because we know we're gonna have to give this all up once we get to Houston. So I'm enjoying it while I can. These two call it the fast food farewell tour since apparently they're gonna stick to eating a healthy diet after this last Yahoo. Me and Carlton are ready to commit to giving all of this up. This is just our last bites of it, but it is gonna be hard to say goodbye and let this all go. They start with a massive order from Jack in the Box. It looks like about three bags of food. Next, they go to McDonald's and get even more. With the way that we came in, the other way. We're going this way. Yeah. Carlton slams down a gallon jug of juice to wash it all down, drinking right out of the container like a savage. My least favorite part of getting ready in the morning is when I have to do anything in front of the mirror. I don't wanna see my reflection because I hate my body. Every morning after shaving her face, Crystal eats the biggest meal she can. I started getting bullied at school, you know, pretty heavily. So it was miserable, but eating is how I've escaped it all. So from 10 to 13, I put on another 100 pounds. I got over 350 pounds by the time I was 13. On this day, she kicked things off with enough Chinese food to feed the entire continent of Asia. From dumplings to sweet and sour chicken to fried rice and egg rolls, Crystal spares no expense when ordering takeout for herself. The one thing that he always has said is he doesn't care how big I get, he cares about my health. He was okay with my weight when we got together because it wasn't affecting my health. But all that Chinese food is really just an appetizer. Moments later, Crystal pours a good five pounds of pasta into a giant bowl. She serves it up with a sugary red sauce and a literal mountain of Texas toast. So I know that I have to change, 
before that gets any worse, before I get any worse, because I hate what I'm doing to my family and I don't want to be like this anymore. There's got to be at least a dozen pieces of bread on that tray for just a few people to share. She washes it all down with not one, but two cans of soda. Gotta stay hydrated. And we have five hours to travel today to stay on track. And then I have to do that two more times just to make it there. And that's a really long time for me to hold out. So we'll see how I handle it. Even on her drive to Dr. Now's office in Houston, Crystal can't help but stop at the drive through and order a giant bag of food. I've just been in this car too long because it's been over seven hours. Just make sure everything's in there. Because all the stops to get food slowed us down a little. I think we've stopped around five times to get a meal. For just two people in the car, that bag is huge. Plus, Crystal said they stopped five times for food on the drive. I'm gonna tell you what I want. The ice cream sandwiches, lasagna big red box. Make sure it's the big one. Oh, I want a cake. That was, that's it. Okay, thank you. Teresa starts her journey up to 600 pounds with a big ticket trip to the grocery store where her husband spares no expense filling up the fridge for her. I know what she eats and it's not healthy, but I don't want to argue and disrespect my mom. He stops for cakes, cookies, chocolate, chips, candy, and more, all while Teresa waits eagerly at home where she lives her life from her bed. If I have a craving, they will get me what I want. And my favorite thing is chicken. But no trip to the grocery store would be complete without, of course, stopping to get a bunch of pizza and fried chicken on the way home. Thank you. They fried barbecue chicken. He delivers the family-sized box of fried chicken and biscuits to Teresa in bed, where she's hooked up to oxygen just to be able to lift her arms. Talana, that's you on the stove? Think I can get a hot dog? Just moments later, she's yelling into the kitchen from her bed for two big hot dogs with ketchup and mustard. I eat. It's one thing that I can't stand to know is my child's hungry. My fear is if she doesn't lose weight, that she might go to sleep and never wake up. Just like the others, Christina is hopelessly addicted to food. For her first meal of the day, she kicks things off with not one, not two, but four fried chicken sandwiches and a generously sized tray of fries. She's also got enough honey mustard to feed a small village. Now we haven't been able to cook the proper food. So. You know, that's very typical. When you've got an enabler here, when you ask yeah. a question, an enabler would answer. So why don't you let her answer? Okay. Okay. Her high volume eating becomes such an issue that Dr. Now has to tell her boyfriend and mom to stop answering for her at her checkup because when she keeps gaining weight, they lie so they don't get called out as enablers. What did they uh, give you from fast food? Christina goes on to tell Dr. Now about all the pizza and junk food she's eaten since the last time she saw him. A hamburger and a couple fries. I didn't finish the fries. I had like three slices of pizza the night that we got in. She says in a typical day, she eats a hamburger and some fries, but hardly ever finishes the fries. Pizza is not part of your diet when you're 700 pounds. Well, granted, they hand you all those uh, food, but you know, you're know gonna have to say no. And Dr. Now has to remind her that pizza isn't part of her diet plan either. None of this is. Thank you. I don't want it. She won't eat it. I know. Her enabling boyfriend is so bad that when she refuses to eat her healthy hospital food, he complains to the nurses and demands they take it back. Do you want it? No. It's hard. It's not what I had expected. She hardly eats anything at all now. I don't want to go get her unhealthy food, fast food, but if I don't go get it for her, she's not going to eat. I don't want her to starve to death. They obviously don't take it back, so he just ends up eating it himself. Dessert is mostly what I crave, and so my first choice is either cake or ice cream. Nothing makes me feel as good as sugar does, so it's the first thing I have every day. Now, Tiffany says dessert is what she craves the most, so she usually starts her day with either cake or ice cream. And the second I take a bite, all my pain and worry fade away for just a moment. So as long as I'm eating, it's like I'm invincible. Nothing can hurt me. On this particular day though, she started with an entire pack of Oreos and a chocolate covered drumstick ice cream cone. God, even her cat is judging her. I'm barely able to function and get around. But if I know we're gonna go shopping and get something to eat, I will push myself to try and go out. But I can barely fit in the car now and I get easily winded. She loves to go food shopping as it's her favorite sport. Shopping for food is something that I absolutely love. Aside from eating, it's my favorite thing to do. And it fills me with so 
such excitement when I find what I want. My hip and my legs are in so much pain and it takes just about everything in me to make it back to the car. She puts cookies, candy, soda, and cake in her cart and enjoys every minute, even though her hips and legs are in total pain. Can I get the double quarter pounder meal large? An order of 20 piece nuggets as well. Cookies as well. Okay, all right, 30, 63 at the window, please. It's okay though, as she nurses the pain with a large double quarter pounder with cheese meal and a 20 piece chicken nugget. No matter what I eat or how much I eat, I never seem to get full. And I would eat nonstop if I could. The problem isn't understanding that. It's not being able to change that. She rested on her belly and for a moment all is well until she barks at her boyfriend to order her a pizza as well. I'm done, but I'm still hungry. All right. Can you order me a pizza? But if Tiffany wants a specific food, I get it because I just, I, I don't know, I just want her to be happy. They go home and eat pizza and cheesy bread on their bed. And that right there is a definition of relationship goals. Who's cuter, these two or Viani and Alan? This is so stressful. So my anxiety's through the roof. It was embarrassing to have to get two seats, but I'm glad I have them because it does help. And I know once I eat, I'll calm down and feel better. On her way to doctor now, she slams down another double quarter pounder with cheese. Clearly, Tiffany just can't stop the mukbang. She tries to do everything. She tries not to be lazy. She tries to do a lot. I feel horrible that I have to ask her to do something that I should be able to do myself. <laughs> you have to go ahead and start cooking breakfast. Don't expect much better from Cynthia though, because after she wakes up and makes her kid put baby powder in her fat folds, she then sends her off to make a disgusting looking breakfast. My biggest thing right now is just being a better mother. But my weight limits me so much. So I wanna lose the weight, but when the cravings come, all I want to do is eat. To no one's surprise, Cynthia plops herself down in front of a half pound of bacon, sausage links, what looks to be a half dozen of scrambled eggs, and three pieces of toast. There's a bag of cane sugar next to her, and I wouldn't be surprised if she just went in with a spoon for dessert. Being a teacher requires being on your feet all day. Come on. By the time I get to my room, I'm so physically wiped out. I have the snacks I brought. And there's always more around. At work, her idea of a healthy snack is a giant glazed donut and however many cookies she wants from a giant bowl. Yeah, that seems to check out. I need for you to come help me in the kitchen. My weight has worn down the cartilage in my knees. So when I walk, it's literally bone on bone. You want it creamy? Yes. You're a professional. You're my potato salad girl. For her first meal of the day, Tara rolls around the kitchen in an office chair to start cooking. She helps her mom make extra creamy potato salad. And is anyone else surprised to see her licking the spoon? Cause I'm not. This is my hiding stash. It's when I feel down, I know where it's at so I can grab me something and got a quick fix. Back in her bed, she opens a drawer by the floor, revealing her emergency stash. She keeps chips, cookies, candy, and other snacks on hand to eat whenever she feels like it. Whether I'm happy or sad or angry or upset or whatever, I always have food. Food has always been my safe haven. Especially at the hardest times. Her mom hand delivers her yet another meal in bed. It looks like a bunch of fried chicken, a biscuit, and some potato salad she helped make earlier. I can't leave my children the way my daddy left me. I want us to do more things as a family. She tries to do as much as she can, but but she can do more. It's hard to tell what's on that plate aside from that big bowl of mac and cheese, but all you need to know is eating is the only thing Tara has done so far in this episode. Me and my wife can't be in the same bed because of how big we both are now. So I try to do what I need, then go and help her. And showering is the most difficult part of the day. It's the most active I have to be, and then I have to do it for VNA too. So I have to save some of my energy for that. Viani and Alan live in Chicago, and they met when Viani was 19 and Alan was 35. Alan expels a ton of energy bathing himself and brings a bucket into the living room to bathe Viani. I'm embarrassed that I have to have Alan help me like this. I can't make it all the way to the back of the house, and that's where the bathroom's at. So I usually have Alan bring a basin with some water and soap and give me like a bath. He's worked up a massive appetite, so let's see how he rewards himself in the kitchen. After I'm done helping VNA and she's dressed, we can finally eat. And I start cooking the second I can because both of us been waiting to eat since we woke up. It's like we're in this cocoon where we're safe. 
and there's nothing we can hurt us. Okay, looks like we got a stack of about 10 pancakes, a dozen eggs about to be cracked, a giant greasy pile of bacon, and probably a lot more we can't see on camera. When I was five, my mom got remarried, and I got a new stepdaddy who became my best friend. But when I turned 10, my mom and my stepdad got a divorce, and it felt like I lost my best and only friend. Naturally, Alan pours a gallon of maple syrup over top his heaping plate, and the couple goes to town on their food. I started going to online dating sites to try to meet someone, and I did, and she'd been the best thing that ever happened to me. The biggest thing we bonded over was food, so in a lot of ways, we just felt like we were made for each other. They eat every last bite of the meal, and Ali even mentions that the biggest thing he and his wife bond over is food. And bro, that's not a good foundation. Yeah. I feel like there's no judgment. We give each other this freedom to eat what we want. We're both just eating and being happy together, and I can forget about my life. But wait, there's more. Just minutes later, there's a knock on the door. But when my weight gain started, it caused even more problems between me and my mom, and she became obsessed with making me lose the weight. My mom started giving me diet pills, even though they were not prescribed or recommended for children to take. Right after eating breakfast, they indulge in massive portions of spaghetti and meatballs and what appears to be an abundant plate of garlic bread delivered right to their door. The harder she tried to control me, the more I'd find ways to sneak food. And that ultimately was the biggest rift in our relationship because eventually she gave up. Vianney dips everything in marinara sauce just to truly maximize her caloric intake. She's a true champion. So after that, I got really depressed. I felt like giving up on life. I was never gonna get past all my demons. For dessert, they eat two big scoops of Neapolitan ice cream. Only fitting, right? But I want more than anything to have a normal life and to be able to go out and do things like other people. Because with how big we are, we can't do anything like normal couples do. So what we have isn't even a life at this point. And just as I was ready to close the book on these two, they really go the extra mile for me and order yet another meal. This time they order pizza and McDonald's. I'm 35 now and I'm probably over 600 pounds. And now I'm at a point where I can feel my body breaking down more and more every day. What are we gonna have for dinner? I don't wanna eat for like a week. <laughs> you're lying, you know you're gonna be hungry in a minute. <laughs> All right, shut it all down. Send these to their trophy. They win the title of 600 pound life's worst eaters. There's no question that this job has been unhealthy for me because I found the perfect community to reinforce my worst habits. I last weighed in six months ago and I was at 811 pounds. We're used to seeing patients on the show being addicted to food. We know by now that they're really bad eaters, but Samantha from season nine really takes the cake, quite literally, because she makes money by eating food on camera for men who think she's hot. Since finding a job was out of the question at my size, I chose to start fetish modeling for a website that catered to people who liked large women. That's right. She's a fat fetish cam girl who eats on command for strangers. Long time no see, everybody. People ask me all the time, when is going to be that cake video? Well, it's right now. It's making me bigger and bigger. I can just feel it. What do you do for a living? Well, Samantha simply lifts up her shirt, rests a giant carrot cake on her naked stomach, and entices her followers by telling them she can feel how much fatter she's getting with every bite. Hey, whatever turns you on, I guess? It's been one bad decision after another. I finally realized about three years ago, once somebody's not motivated to help themselves, you can knock yourself out trying to help them, that you're not gonna get anywhere with it. But just a few minutes later, Samantha orders a ton of takeout and has it delivered to her door. I guess eating an entire cake just wasn't satisfying enough for her. A garden hose to the hot water the washer and runs it outside because I have to be cleaned outside like an animal. You know your eating habits are bad when, instead of showering, you have to be hosed off naked on the front porch. At just 23 years old, this is 700 pound Nicole's life. As soon as I get up in the morning, I gotta eat something or I feel like I'm gonna throw up. So I keep something to snack on in my room, but I still can't get up to get it myself. Charlie! Yeah? Can you please come here? Can you please give me those potato chips? I've gotten so big that I could barely get up and get around. As soon as she wakes up in the morning, she needs to eat something or she feels like she's gonna throw up. She probably just gets nauseous when she catches a glimpse of herself in the mirror. I mean, I would. I'll flat out move it. Okay, I'll move whatever I gotta move. But needing to shower with the hose on the front porch isn't humiliating enough for Nicole to stop overeating. Even though it's very difficult to get around, I truly love shopping for food. To see all the selections and options makes
makes it worth how hard it is. She goes hard in the grocery store, even though she's too big to get around the aisles and starts knocking stuff over. I absolutely love to cook and I take my food very seriously. Yeah, your eating is serious, all right. Food is so serious to her, in fact, that she won't even let anyone else cook. When I want something particular, I won't let anyone else make it because it has to be done exactly right. So it tastes as good as it should. And I'm not letting anyone mess it up. She's so obsessed with everything she eats and how it tastes that she refuses to let anyone else prepare meals. God forbid they don't put enough Doritos and barbecue sauce in her raw meat. By the way, what the heck is she even making right now? Food is just simply amazing to me. And it's hard to stop eating. I just want to make sure I've had enough food in me. Regardless of what it is, she shovels it all in her mouth. By the way, the cameraman is a huge jerk for zooming in. I might be sick after seeing how dirty and gross her lip rings get after this 10 thousand calorie meal when i get stressed like this and i want to eat i start to think about all the things i'm craving and one place ain't gonna have everything i want i just want the oven roasted chicken on that one kind of bread italian herb and cheese foot long in this next scene the court orders a chicken sub from subway but she has a minor panic attack when she realizes she can't get the burger she's craving from this sub shop i can't help but give in to my cravings and eat everything there's nothing like unwrapping a burger and you get that hot wrapper cheese the burgers just fresh and just so irresistible so she demands an extra stop and gets a burger and fries to follow her sub a lunch of champions 